Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Werner Tobin here at the Southwest Ag Conference. Hey, this morning I've caught up with Ken Fury, a noted corn agronomist. Uh, just come, come to the show today to, and yesterday to talk corn, Ken. Hey, thanks for taking the time. You bet. Glad to be here. Awesome. Now, you, uh, you know, uh, you're a well-respected agronomist. You do a tremendous amount of on-farm research with growers. Tell us about your consulting business. Uh, my wife and I own a crop consulting business in central Illinois. Um, we make our living off of soil testing, writing nutrient recommendations, building variable rate maps, um, variable uh, rate population maps, now multi-hybrid maps, uh, aerial imagery, yield maps, that type of thing. Uh, and that's really what, what pays the bills, but we consult on just about everything in uh, ag production. And, and in order to be able to consult on a lot of different things from fungicides to planter attachments to you name it, we put out about 150 research plots a year, kind of demonstration research, so we can get boots on the ground experience with the products and with the ideas, that type of thing, and then we bring that information back to our customer base, as well as some of that information we're bringing here the last couple of days. Awesome. Now, um, when you talk to growers and part of your presentation yesterday, you, you, know, you talk about the big three, um, and that is you know, sunlight, water, and nutrients. Talk a little bit about that and how they, you know, how they deliver the yield. Yeah, it's kind of maybe a 10,000 foot view of <laughs> crop production, but that's the, the yeah. big three. So farmers will say, well, Ken, I can't, I can't do anything about the amount of sunlight that hits my farm or the amount of water if I don't have irrigation that hits my farm. I can manage nutrients. Um, but the reality is, yeah, while you can't do anything about the amount of sunlight hits your farm, you can manipulate it or be more efficient with it so you can harvest more starch from it, same way with the water. So the more efficient you are with the water, the more bushels. Then the trick is, though, to bring them all together. If you've got a plenty of sunshine, plenty of water, but you run short on nutrients, you're not going to utilize the, the gift that you were given. Or if you have good nutrient load, good water load, but you don't maximize your sunlight interception, you leave money on the table. So trying to work all three of them together, no matter what the crop is, whether it's corn, soybeans, pumpkins, those big three are going to be there if photosynthesis has taken place. I want to talk about those three in the context of, uh, of your customers. Now you talked yesterday and basically you've done four years of research with a group with your customers and you grouped them into three three groups, one of uh, three three typical growers. Now I want to run through that and talk about, I guess, the characteristics of these growers and how they're using the information or whether they're not using the information you're producing. So let's talk about your first group and I think you call those Mr. Cautious. Yeah, we call them, uh, and that's the biggest percentage of our group. Uh, we kind of nickname it, I am cautious, yeah. Mr. I am cautious. Uh, for that particular grower, he's very cautious about, uh, for instance, high yield goals. So secretly he wants high yield goals, but he may tell me as his consultant, he wants, let's say 200 bushel corn. He may tell his fertilizer dealer he wants 200 bushel corn. Everybody at the coffee shop, he wants that. But in reality, he'd like 250 bushel corn. So he kind of sets a ceiling in there. And then the idea that shooting for higher yield goals means more money and that kind of backs them off so they're they're somewhat restricted on um, their yield goals because they're worried about how, what financially how much is it going to cost they typically have uh, a more defensive attitude so they're going to pick hybrids that are more defensive uh, they're not going to be after the racehorse hybrids for the top end yield they tend to be defensive on their population they tend to be conservative on their nitrogen and their nutrient loads as well so they kind of put in their own ceiling uh, but trying to be very uh, cost conscientious yeah. in that scenario. Yeah. Um, and, then there, and then there's Homer. Homer, yeah. Homer's always swinging for a home run. Uh, <laughs> and that's a smaller percentage, but it still makes up probably 10 or 15% of our customer base where they, it's hammered down on everything. Yeah. So they're, they're only going to plant the elite hybrids that win the yield contest that year or the past year. Um, they're going to push populations hard. They're going to pour nitrogen to it. Um, they're very proactive, meaning if they see one bug, they spray all their fields yeah. disease-wise and everything else. They're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at it, and they realistically think uh, high yields. So they, they, they come to me and say, I want 270 bushel corn. They talk about it at their fertilizer dealer. That's what they talk about at the, at the uh, coffee shop. They realistically want that, and they expect high yields. So they'll, they'll do whatever they can you know, to get the yield at, at that point. Now let's talk about Mr. T, and I want to spend the rest of our conversation talking about Mr. T, because Mr. T is 
I guess, the grower who's using your expertise the most, and they're the most profitable. So talk about Mr. T, the third group, and what the characteristics of that grower is, and how they're using the information and the insight that you can provide. So, the group that we call Mr. VRT is, is somebody who looks at each field as different management zones within the field. So he looks at his texture differences, his sand knobs, his clay bottoms, that type of thing, and breaks out that field and studies it pretty hard. So he knows what the yield history is by management zone through the field. That allows him then to manipulate the sun, the water, and the, and the nutrients that we're talking about. So when it comes to sunlight interception, for instance, he starts to identify which hybrids perform best on which management zones. Uh, so he's, he's built a case that says, I could go in here and not only change population as I go through the farm, I could actually change hybrids as I go through the farm to try to capture more or less sunlight depending on the situation. He can manage his water supply by more or less plant density within itself. Nitrogen's another one that takes a lot of studying to see what is the soil's capacity to produce nitrogen because you have to make up the rest. So in a lot of cases, your lower productive soil actually needs more in and your higher productive soil needs less. So you move nitrogen from your heavy soils to your light soils, you move population down from your light soils into your heavy soils, so it's kind of a trading nut. And, and, uh, the student of that who studies and researches hybrids, nitrogen, that whole process and puts it together tends to be uh, more profitable because he's not spending all of his money like Mr. Homer, but he's not too cautious on areas like, um, like uh, Mr. Cautious is, and he's trying to basically milk every bushel out for the least amount of dollars within the field, within the management zones. <laughs>